To elicit an immune response by a T cell, it should first recognize an antigen. However, a large protein antigen cannot be recognized by a T cell. Initially, the protein antigen should be degraded into peptides inside a cell by a process called antigen processing. Later, the peptide is associated with an MHC molecule, and the complex is transported and displayed on the cell membrane. This process is called antigen presentation, and now the T cell can recognize this complex. The cells presenting peptide antigens to T cells are generally termed antigen presenting cells. Since all cells of the immune system expressing either class 1 or class 2 MHC molecules can present peptides to T cells, they all could be designated as antigen presenting cells. However, by convention, cells that display peptides associated with class 1 MHC molecules to CDAT cytotoxic cells are referred to as target cells, and cells that display peptides associated with class 2 MHC molecules to CD4T helper cells are called antigen presenting cells. On the basis of the types of antigen to be processed and presented, antigen processing and presenting pathways are of two types. One is the cytosolic or endogenous pathway, and the other is, the endocytic or exogenous pathway. Cytosolic or endogenous pathway process and present the endogenous or intracellular protein antigens associated with class 1 MHC molecules. Since all nucleated cells express class 1 MHC molecules, any nucleated cell can serve as a target cell, presenting endogenous antigens. Most often, target cells are cells that have been infected by a virus or some other intracellular microorganisms. However, altered cell cells such as cancer cells, aging body cells, or allogeneic cells from a graft can also serve as targets. The process is called the cytosolic pathway as it occurs in the cytosol of the cell. Let us take the example of a virus-infected cell. The viral nucleic acid uses the host machinery to synthesize its proteins, which are nothing but antigens. As these protein antigens are larger in size to be bound to MHC molecules, they should be degraded into short peptides of about 8 to 10 amino acids. In a target cell, proteins to be degraded are tagged with a small protein called ubiquitin. Inside the cell, these ubiquitin tagged proteins are marked for degradation. The degradation process occurs inside a cylindrical protease complex called proteasome. This proteolytic activity utilizes ATP and releases several peptides. Now, peptides generated in the cytosol by proteasome are ready for presentation. But, they should be immediately associated with MHC molecules that are inside the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So, using ATP, these peptides are translocated to the rough endoplasmic reticulum through a protein pore called, transporter associated with antigen processing. TAP is a membrane-spanning heterodimer consisting of two proteins, TAP1 and TAP2. TAP has the highest affinity for peptides containing 8 to 10 amino acids, which is the optimal peptide length for class 1 MHC binding. Meanwhile, within the rough endoplasmic reticulum membrane, the MHC class 1 molecule will be getting ready to get associated with the peptide. A complete MHC class 1 peptide complex will have an alpha chain, beta 2 microglobulin, and the peptide to be presented. Initially, a newly synthesized alpha chain of MHC class 1 molecule associates with Kelnexin, a chaperone that promotes its folding. When beta 2 microglobulin binds to the alpha chain, Kelnexin is released, and the complex binds to Calreticulin and the TAP associated protein, Tapacin. This association leads to the interaction of Tapacin with TAP, which promotes peptide capture by the class 1 molecule. Peptides not bound by MHC are rapidly degraded. Once the peptide is bound, the MHC class 1 displays increased stability and can dissociate from calreticulin and tapicin. Now, the complete MHC class 1 peptide complex is released from the rough endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi complex. From Golgi complex, it is transported to the surface of the cell. This complex is now recognized by a CD8 plus T cytotoxic cell. The activated T-cytotoxic cell degrades the target cell, thus eliminating the spread of the pathogen, 